Hello in this video we will discuss about the GIP and GLP-1 secretion that is known as the anteroendocrine hormone that's produced from the anteroendocrine cells are present in the gastrointestinal tract. So what is GIP? GIP is the gastric inhibitory polypeptide and GLP-1 is a glucagon like peptide 1 which that play functional role as a glucagon for the uptake uh, of insulin into the blood circulatory system from the pancreas. So the primary hormone secretion from intestine on ingestion of glucose are nutrients to stimulate insulin secretion from pancreas from the beta cell. So remember the beta cell is the target for the GIP and GLP-1. So let's begin to understand with the food, sugar, food digestion, sugar, protein and fats. When digest, when go into the stomach, the stretching of the stomach wall will sense through an anteroendocrine cell in small intestine as well as stomach. In this way, it will, when food touch with the anteroendocrine cell in small intestine, produce the GIP and GLP-1. GIP target to another way it will inhibit the uh, inhibit the gastric inhibitory polypeptide it will lead to decrease the appetite and in this way it will uh, GIP will target to the adipose tissue for the uptake of the lipids and fats is known as the lipolysis and free fatty acid synthesis why this is happening because the food is present in the gas gas gastrointestinal tract so we should not need to reserve that foods so we should need to uptake that stored food also because the food is already present in the gastrointestinal tract will be used as a preservation in the next phase so on the other hand the GIP will be bind also with the pancreas and GLP-1 also and here is the uh, pancreas which that's going to GLP-1 receptor and GIP receptor will target the beta cell after this targeting the beta cell increase the glucose sensing beta cell decrease glucagon secretion from the alpha cell as well as increase through a and increase to a GLP-1 receptor a GIP receptor will increase insulin secretion because the glucagon like peptide one which that will uptake the insulin and biosynthesis and beta cell proliferation and beta cell survival is also it's possible so here is the ghrelin which that is released from the digestive system will be bind with the pancreas and in this way the pancreas when bind with the ghrelin with the pancreas it will lead to inhibit the uh, inhibit the more appetite so here it will target to the brain and increase nausea and decrease food intake and decrease body weight and in this way the glp1 receptor bind with the brain and inhibitory effect in digestion so the digestion will be inhibited by this activity why because in this way the already here is a glp1 or a receptor uh, bind with the brain will uh, lead to inhibit uh, more food because it means that a, a decrease of the food uh, food assimilation and food absorption for the uh, for the slow down that food digestion so if the ghrelin and gastrin will produce this ghrelin and gastrin will target the pancreas also and in this way the islet of langerhans is neogenesis in the pancreas with a beta cell and on the other hand here is the vagal nerve which that stimulate the hypoglycemia increase appetite so in this way it will be target the gastrointestinal tract to produce the glp1 and gip so the glp1 and gip will be moved into the blood circulatory system uh, remember so it a glp1 and gip will target to the beta cell and here is you should need to uh, ignore this diagram because we will discuss later in this manner so this beta cell when bond with the glp1 and gip gip so in this way let's begin to understand with the detail 
so the cellular pathway and what is the mechanism of the secretion of insulin so this is the pancreas remember bind with the beta cell this glp and gl gip glp1 and gip so i am drawing the bigger picture for understanding with the plasma membrane by layer of phospholipid you should need to understand and in this way the glucose when hyperglycemia and amino acid and fatty acid will be increased in our blood circulatory system will will require the movement into that several tissue for metabolism so in this way the hyperglycemia hyper uh, hyper uh, hyper amino acids and fatty acid hyperlipidemia and hyperproteinemia which that will lead to target into the several tissue after the binding with the insulin so here is the gip and glp1 will be secrete so in this way due to the stretching of the wall of the gastrointestinal tract so this is here is the glut2 channel which that is glut2 channel is the hyperglycemic dependent channel when hyperglycemic effect will be occur so this channel will allow the glucose to move in so the influx of the glucose and amino acid so in this way the glucose 6 phosphate will be formed th through a glucokinase enzyme use and in this way the adp here is the metabolism will be occur from the adp to produce atp through glucose by several mechanisms for example glycolysis as well as krebs cycle and electron transport chain so in this way the increase of the atp is the separate discussion but first of all we should need to understand another thing is the acetylcholine will be also bind with the acetylcholine receptor and the phospholipase c enzyme which that will be splicing of the ip2 to ip3 and dac diacylglycerol in this way the ip3 is the inositol triphosphate this inositol triphosphate is basically used and sensitivity of the calcium channel in the endoplasmic reticulum while here the gip and glp1 will be bind with the receptor agonist receptor and it will bind and the trimeric intracellular protein which that is the three subunit contain alpha beta and gamma so alpha contain gdp will activate to form a alpha gtp and here is the protein kinase C will be activate through diacylglycerol and here is the S adenylate cyclase enzyme used to produce through a GTP alpha GTP separation to produce the cyclic AMP so increase of the cyclic AMP will trigger the protein kinase A and protein phosphorylation several type of protein so here is the IP3 will be bound with the endoplasmic reticulum so inside the endoplasmic reticulum the stored calcium are present which will move out to increase the cytoplasmic calcium so in this way the atp will trigger more the efflux of the potassium and the atp dependent potassium channel this lead to depend more atp and membrane depolarization will be occur in this way the second step is the calcium will move in so influx of the calcium will lead to more increase of the calcium intracellularly so after this increase the calcium will target the um, through a protein phosphorylation lead to also the calcium which that will insulin vesicle trigger to store store granules in the form of vesicle will be exocytose so exocytosis of the insulin vesicle will be occur through this mechanism so after this movement and move into the blood circulatory system this insulin because it is the endocrine hormone and it will be target the several tissue for the influx of the glucose into the cell for normal the isoglycemic index but remember isoglycemic before the isoglycemic index uh, isoglycemic effect the hypoglycemic effect will be occur and in this way the again this cell will uh, stimulation and after glucose consumption will lead to more appetite and stimulation of the gastrointestinal tract for secretion of the enzyme lead to more absorption of glucose amino acid and fat 
so that is the mechanism of the gip and glp fund secretion for the homeostasis and digestion of food and secretion of insulin 